one time I remember I took friends to like a suit making, like a custom suit making business that didn't even really have like a sign or anything because it was just something the Amish knew about. One of the great things about my job, let's say, is that I've had a chance to make a number of Amish friends and I've been uh, blessed, I've been fortunate enough to have the hospitality extended to me to uh, stay with those friends and sometimes for an extended period of time. The longest I've stayed with an Amish family was about two months. I want to share with you my f list of five favorite things about living with the Amish. Number one, the food. So this is probably the most obvious one. I'm not great at talking about food. See, I, I like food, but I'm not a foodie. So I don't have the rich vocabulary to describe the flaky crust of a pie, the aromas that you smell when you go into a Amish home and dinners cooking in the oven. I've got some favorite Amish foods. I actually did a video on my top five favorite Amish foods. But suffice to say that the diet is a bit different from what I'm used to eating and things like scrapple and shoe fly pie. So when I'm in an Amish uh, home, I tend to eat pretty well. You know, if you're not also doing the farm work that often goes along with an Amish lifestyle and the chores, then you can find uh, the numbers on the scale rising uh, fairly quickly. You know, and I eat different things with, with in different Amish homes. It's not like there's one uniform Amish diet. There are some families that try to eat very healthy. There's some Amish that kind of like junk food. You know, one family I stay with really emphasizes kind of the organic food. I mean, they're organic produce farmers. That's their occupation. So they are quite into health-oriented foods. In addition to the kind of the traditional Amish, you know, dishes, they, they like a lot of organic. They take vitamin supplements. Uh, the first time I ever had kombucha, the drink, I think it's a, is it a fermented or a fungus drink? Actually, I think, it, I think there's like a fungus that grows on top. Anyway, kombucha, first time I ever had that, first time I ever heard of it was in that family's home. In another friend's home, you know, in addition to the traditional Pennsylvania Dutch diet, we also have a lot of like subs in food from the family's deli and seafood stand. They recently sold that, but that was kind of the traditional diet. I guess I'll miss that when I go back to stay with them again. <laughs> In another family I stay with, I get kind of the traditional farmer's menu with, with the breakfast casserole and the scrapple and the cornmeal, you know, kind of the hearty farmer's uh, breakfasts and, and meals. And I'm not going to say that all Amish foods or all foods that you, I eat in an Amish home are my favorite, but some of them can be really good. So I'll put, a, I'll put a link to that video that I did at the end. You can check it out if you'd like to know my five favorite Amish foods. So number two, you get to disconnect, sort of. So you might assume that when you stay with the Amish, you kind of adopt a low-tech lifestyle by default. You know, you stay with the Amish, you kind of live as they do. And that's the case to a degree. You know, it's not like I lock my smartphone and my laptop and everything, you know, in my trunk and never open it. In fact, many of them don't mind if I bring that into the home and sometimes they want to look stuff up uh, as well. Like they may need to check, uh, I can't remember what was it we checked last time, but it's not like those technologies are absolutely illegal or can't be brought into an Amish home. In fact, some of my friends, their teenage children have phones of their own, smartphones. But I tend to like to kind of tamp that down, even though my work is done online and I kind of need to be connected. But when you don't have those things right at hand, you don't automatically kind of go to them uh, by default when you're bored or you just kind of have a need to check your email or check social media or whatever. I'm still, you know, I'm still kind of connected when I'm staying with Amish friends, but it's a lot less than I'm normally, you know, spending online. That's nice. You don't have as many kind of things beeping at you, notifications uh, going off around you. You don't have a smart refrigerator uh, telling you your, you know, your uh, ice is frozen or whatever <laughs> smart refrigerators do uh, nowadays. So that's pretty refreshing. So number three, the children. Now, I really enjoy spending time around my Amish friends' children. And I think one thing about it is like you're a little bit of a curiosity to them, I think, as a non-Amish person, especially the little ones. It's just kind of interesting. I've been had a chance to see some of my Amish friends' children grow up over the years from just like a little kid to like, a, you know, teenager. One kind of neat thing there, too, is that when they're really young, you can't really communicate with them unless you speak Pennsylvania Dutch because that's the first language of the Amish, and that's what the children learn first. And then they later tend to learn English when they go to school at, like, age six, seven. Some, some children will learn 
earlier, like especially if their parents are kind of like in some kind of a business that has uh, contact with non-Amish people. A lot of my friends, their children, I, you know, I wasn't able to really communicate with them other than using the very limited Pennsylvania Dutch vocabulary and phrases that I knew. Like I remember one of my friend's sons, you know, I, I could never communicate with them for the first four or five, six years, obviously, that I knew them. And then one year, you know, I, I went back and he had started first grade and suddenly uh, he's speaking English to me. And that's like, whoa. <laughs> so the, we had kind of a, you know, now we have a new connection. Number four, when you live with the Amish, you get involved in ways that you never could otherwise. What I mean by that is when you live with the Amish, rather than just kind of visiting for a couple days, you kind of start to blend into your surroundings, so to speak. Like, you know, the first few days you might be kind of a novelty, but if you're staying with one family, you just kind of become, I don't want to say part of the family, but you're, you're someone else living there, right? So you're there with them for the daily rhythms. You get up for breakfast. You, you know, you're there for, uh, you know, morning prayer, for singing at, at, after breakfast for some families that do that. You know, you may help around the farm, around the house. You know, you may help chores, you may help wash up, done a lot of different things like helping my friend with his with his organic produce, uh, picking tomatoes, planting, doing things in the greenhouse in winter. You kind of become embedded and, and kind of accepted. You're not a part of this culture, but you're kind of a part of, part of what's going on. And you kind of get to participate in daily life in ways you wouldn't otherwise. And, you know, I often drive my Amish friends places when I'm staying with them. So you may go to the chiropractor or one of my Friend's brothers had a, an eye injury. He had, he had a team of horses out and uh, something happened and he got metal bar struck him. I can't remember how it happened exactly, but I had to take him to a, an eye doctor. And you go to take him to the bank. You take him on errands to Amish stores you've never been to before. In some cases, you didn't even know were there. One time, I remember I took friends to like a suit making, like a custom suit making business that didn't even really have like a sign or anything because it was just something the Amish knew about. There was a lady that that did that sort of thing. There's a good chance you'll get invited to church. You may get invited to dinner at a relative's home. You may get invited to a youth singing or some other church event. Cooking out at a campfire in the backyard, playing board games, these kinds of things are just neat things that I'd be able to take part in. I don't wear Amish clothes or try to pretend I'm Amish when I visit my Amish friends. That would be kind of silly. <laughs> you know, they know I'm not Amish. There's you know, they're not offended by the way I live. They're not offended by the fact that I'm not Amish or that I use technology. I've had a couple situations where people I know, Amish friends, enjoyed dressing them up in Amish clothes. One of those was my brother, <laughs> and they had a good laugh out of that. You get to be a part of the household and get to experience some aspects of Amish life that you wouldn't otherwise. So that's definitely a plus. Number five, you make friends. And this may seem obvious, but when you're living with someone for an extended period of time, you get to know them pretty well. They get to know you pretty well. You know, you get to have a taste or a real experience of a plain lifestyle. And on the other hand, the Amish friends you're living with, I think, also get a sort of a vicarious look at, a, at an English lifestyle. So they may ask you, like, I fly in planes fairly often. So when I'm with one Amish family, the kids are always asking me about what it's like to fly in a plane and at an airport. And so, you know, what does it feel like when you're taking off? So I kind of describe that to them and they're just kind of amazed by it. And, you know, the parents are getting a kick out of that too. I've actually had Amish friends come to stay uh, with my family in North Carolina on a couple different occasions. You know, so that's all very enjoyable and you get to know people well. And, you know, I have Amish friends, but I also, you know, you start to think of them as just friends who are Amish. So that's my list of the five best things about living with the Amish. What about the other side of that? What are the toughest things about living with the Amish? I did a video on that, so you can check it out here. Have you stayed or lived with the Amish? Let us let me know like what that was like. What were your favorite things about that experience? Thanks. Talk to you next time.